Welcome, Leadership Nation. We are on a journey here to bring together men and women that believe in taking action in their life in the areas of finance, family, and fitness. And you guys are here today on the Leadership to Wealth podcast, and I'm your host, Neil D'Souza. Now, guys, I have got an amazing guest for you today. I, I can't even begin to tell you what you're going to get out of our show today, but our guest today 25-year career in broadcasting, acting, and adult education. She has highly, she's a highly experienced speaker, facilitator who has designed and delivered hundreds of workshops on public speaking, stage presence, on-camera presentation, and communication. Now, she has extensive on-camera experience as well as a television host and a, a whole number of things. She currently, now here's the great part, currently she works with professionals to enhance their effectiveness in speaking, communication, and leadership. Guys, I want to welcome today to our show, Jan Bailey. Jan, glad to have you. Thank you very much, Neil. Now, after that great introduction, now I feel tongue-tied. Oh my goodness, great communicator, and I can't say anything. So, I'm teasing. Thank you very much. That was a fabulous introduction, and I, I do make people nervous, it seems, when they talk to me on camera or on, well, any kind of speaking, actually. People always get a bit self-conscious because they think, ah, public speaking, but honest. It's a painless process. I guarantee it. It'll be fun. Well, absolutely. I'm going to have to worry about all of my ums and ahs with you today because oh, uh, I know that you're... I have oh. a sheet here, Neil, yes. that I will keep track of your ums and your ahs. <laughs> <as you're... laughs> That's great. Well, I, no, I, I love promise it. I, I love it. That's just cool. The, the, the great thing is that there's always room to improve. So we, we can definitely talk about that. You know, I want to really get into what we can do here today because we're, we're going to talk. You're not a regular person that I would interview, but I think that your skills, your background are going to be able to help so many people um, because how many people have the ums and ahs and the challenges with public speaking? And we're in a different age where our presence can be online in people's face on a, and is on a regular basis. And so the question becomes, how do we improve that? How do we engage that? And okay, great. So, so now we're, we're, let's actually get into this leadership portion okay. where we get to know a little bit more about you. We get to know about your journey, how you've come to where you've come to. And you're obviously you're a, public speaker, you teach people to speak publicly, how to, how to have a presence. And now before we get into that, tell us a little bit about, you know, if people wanted to get in contact with you, your, the name of your company and where they can, where they can reach you, how they can get a hold of you. Okay. Well, as you mentioned, my name is Jan and my company name is Ovation Speaker Training. And that is our website is OvationSpeakerTraining.com. So I'm Jan at OvationSpeakerTraining.com. And it's, it, it pains me to say that it requires a fair bit of courage, I find, for people to connect with me. And so I will say right off the top, if there are people who are watching that say, hey, this is something that I might like to embark on or I think I need some help, I really admire people who are able to take a big breath and forget about their traumatic speaking experience when they were in grade three in Mr. Smith's class and they, they, they crashed and burned in front of the class, whatever they're doing, right? Because everybody's got a speaking story. So I really admire it when people reach out and say, hey, Jen, or, or my business partner, Shona, I really would like some help. I really do admire that. Wow. Well, look, I think that there are so many people today that are going to be able to benefit from our conversation here today because of our current environment. That if you're a if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're just a, a, an everyday person, and you're thinking, how can I grow in my company? speaking is going to help, right? Well, it's unbelievable. And so let's be clear, all speaking is public speaking. Right. It doesn't matter if it's just you and I talking, Neil, this is public speaking. I have to be able to 
And so do you, we have to be able to, to be clear about our ideas. We have to be able to express ourselves well. We have to allow, if we're, if we're persuading or selling something, which we all are, let's, yeah. let's be clear about that. Yeah. Whether you're persuading people to accept your ideas or to buy a, a widget, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, it's persuasion. And so you as a, as a human have to be able to express yourself well. So all speaking is public speaking. And I find if people Absolutely. can make that little shift in their head, it really does shift things because they'll think, oh, okay, well, I'm actually pretty good at that. Right. And, and really that's about, that's how the marriage between leadership and public speaking comes in so tight is because think about the skills it takes to be a leader. You need to, you need to inspire, you need to influence, you need to motivate, you need to, you need to invigorate your teams or your company. And what better way to do that than your ability to connect and communicate? Because don't get me wrong, the first, the first key of public speaking is you got to be able to connect, right? What does your audience want to hear? Not what do you want to tell them, but what do they want to hear? And there's quite a big difference between those things. And as, as people online who are trying to promote ourselves or promote our products or promote our teams or promote our ideas, we have to think about what is it that my audience actually needs or wants or would like or what would help them and then switch your message accordingly. And that's, that's can be quite difficult for people, but that is, that is leadership at its essence, I think. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that's it. You got nothing else. But, yeah, I got nothing we, else to say. We could go down so many different roads, but I thought, <laughs> you know what? I want to find out about you. I want to find out about your background. Okay. You, okay. you know where I are keep, you from? I keep derailing you. Yeah. We, we. Well, no, no. That's absolutely fine. We we can. We'll get into all of this stuff. This is some real meat and potatoes that we can get into okay. when we get into the okay. the second. But for heaven's for heaven's sake, Jen, tell us about yourself. Okay. Yes, tell us I, about yourself. I am a prairie girl by birth. Mm -hmm. I am originally from Alberta, and uh, that's that's it. Still love Alberta. Still a great place to be in the world. And I decided I was supposed to be a lawyer along the way. I'm not sure what happened, but at some point, I decided I wanted to be an actor. You can imagine my parents' delight <laughs> when I said, Mom, Dad, I'm not going to go to law school. I'm going to move to Vancouver and be an actor. Needless to say, they were quite surprised. And, but, you know, to their everlasting credit, they said, okay, honey, off you go and do your, and do your thing. And it was an extraordinary experience for me. I moved to Vancouver on my own. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a job. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have, right? So you kind of fumble your way through. And I, through that process, kind of stumbled into television, really. And I realized that it wasn't an actor that I really wanted to be or what that wasn't the skill that I wanted to utilize. Although I think we all utilize that skill on a regular basis. But I, I realized that I wanted to be an on-camera host or presenter or, and I thought maybe news, but then I realized that I, I can't emotionally tolerate the news on a, on a regular basis. It's really a hard, I admire people who can do it and who love it because it's a hard place to earn your living when you're kind of surrounded by that heaviness right yeah. on a daily basis so i realized that wasn't my thing so that kind of evolved into into on camera hosting and facilitating and i did some crazy fun stuff in vancouver when i lived there and then and then neil i met a man yeah and that's when my trouble started. And then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, he was a producer at a television show and I auditioned for him. Yeah. A breakfast show. He didn't hire me. Can you believe it? He didn't hire me. But now we're married. <sighs> I know. I know the plight of the plight of the underemployed actor, if you can believe that. So, so we ended up moving to to a place, a little place called Barry in Ontario. He said, yeah. "Honey, after we've been together for I don't even remember how long now." He said to me, "How do you feel about moving moving to Ontario?" And I'm thinking Toronto, right? What a great step for right. my for my career. That'd be brilliant. And he said, "Oh, to Barry." And I said, "To where?" Uh, yeah. So I've been in Barrie now for a long time. And let me tell you, it is not half an hour from Toronto because that's what he told me. Oh, yeah, it's half an hour from Toronto. You'll have no trouble going into work there in Toronto. He lied. Yes. Blatant lie. 
So anyway, so here I am. Here I am in Barrie, and I'm meeting all kinds of cool people like you. And this has been home base for a long time. And this is where I met my business partner, and we began Ovation Speaker Training, which is which is wonderful. And it's been a a great platform to to go around the world. I do a fair bit of work with with our company in the Middle East, mm -hmm. in a little wow. tiny little country called Qatar, which some of you maybe have heard of. Uh, one of it is the richest country in the world, so it's a very cool place to visit. Wow. And so we've done a fair bit of work there. So Toronto, being so close to Toronto and Ontario is really a nice, a nice leapfrog, right? Right, so, right. So that's me in a nutshell. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to crack that nutshell open a little bit. <laughs> I, I want to go back because you, that was a large leap to go from lawyer to actor. What, what age are we Wasn't talking that? about? I know it wasn't. I was in university and, wow. and I you was were on already that on that journey. Yeah. Well, I was on that track because I was, yeah. I was very left brained and very analytical and all of those kinds of words that are helpful. I think I'm sorry if I'm offending any lawyers, I, I really don't know, but I assume that that, that was going to be a good skill for me. And I was comfortable speaking in front of people. So that was a nice, a nice mm -hmm. marriage and it just made sense. And I think there was an image in my mind of what of what it meant to be a lawyer and what it meant to be in in the practice of law. And I think it's a wonderful profession. And so that was kind of my goal. And then in my program at university, I was required to take a fine arts program. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the classes you had to take, you know, you have to take phys ed. You had to take, right, right. You know, yeah. In high school and in university. And so I took a drama class. Okay. Yeah. And I said, whoa. Yeah. And I felt it really felt like it fit. Right. It was a very funny feeling. Yeah. To sort of feel like, wow, I, I feel like the, I'm, I, I connected to something that I hadn't before. I felt able to express myself in ways that I hadn't been able to at that point. Mm -hmm. And I just went ah, and did a dramatic left turn. I thought, well, what the heck? Why don't I give this a go and see what happens? University will always be there. I can go back if I want to. Right. And I, I, well, I did go back to university. I went back and got my master's degree years and years later, but I never made right. it back. I never made it back right. to law school. So perhaps you could play a lawyer on TV, but, uh, but I'm wondering you, when you went to, when you went further West to Vancouver, yeah. Yeah. you went to Vancouver but you said no job, no nothing. No, I didn't have anywhere to live either. What, what was that like? Because you, uh, for the listeners, entrepreneurs have to deal with some of those leaps. Yes, yeah. Right? Yeah. Where you do not have the safety net. And so no, you took a, a leap. Oh, there. yeah, yeah. And you know what? And, and maybe that's why I enjoy, I'm one of those crazy people that enjoys speaking in front of audiences as well, because there is inherent in speaking a certain amount of risk taking okay right? because you're standing in front of an audience or again no matter the size and you have to be able to open yourself up you have to be able to share you have to be able to connect you have to be able to allow the audience to see something in you and that for many many people feels very risky so and you're right, that is very much inherent in the notion of entrepreneur. It's this ability to say, okay, I've got me and I've got my skills and my superpowers and I am just going to try this. And, and really, I think in the end, it came down to, well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, right. I guess I can move back to Alberta, right? I could go back and go back to university and that's still a very safe place. So, so I just did it. And I think the attitude was very much that if not now, when, right? And let's see what happens. And so by walking around with that kind of opportunistic attitude of, well, I don't know anything. Ignorance sometimes really is truly bliss. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'll just kind of walk around through my life in Vancouver and, and kind of figure it out as I go. Mm -hmm. And it really is amazing what opportunities will present themselves to you if you don't, if you don't do this, right? right. If you don't right. shut them down and think, no, that's you not don't what I want. No, that's cover not your what eyes. I want. Right. Yeah. And I think we really do that. And it's not our fault necessarily it's because well 
my dad told me that that you have to really work hard for your opportunities. Well, okay, mm -hmm. I better put my nose to the grindstone and work hard, hard, hard. No, yes. I need to open myself up and meet people and talk to people and, and tell them about me and connect with people and opportunities present themselves, right? It's a subtle shift, mm -hmm. but it's the shift of the entrepreneur that says, why not? I'll give this a try and see how it goes. And mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's risky, but it works usually. Okay. So, well, you, then you got really risky and you married your husband, but. Oh my uh, gosh, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, so now the question from there to starting a, a business. Okay. How did, how did that occur? How did that all come to pass? A yeah. failed job interview. Okay. Another right? failed so job interview. Yeah. I, are you seeing a pattern here? This is so embarrassing. <laughs> but, but again, I like to think of it as a, an opportunity that I thought was what I wanted that turned into something that was way better. So I went to a job interview at a college to do a, for a, I was doing some facilitating of communication at the college level. And then I decided, well, okay, I might as well give this a go and, and step into kind of a, a leadership role and see if that's the direction that I want to take this. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of me that was, I have to admit, quite uh, resentful, rebellious, I'm not sure, pushed back at that notion of Monday to Friday, nine to five kind of job. Because I, I haven't okay. really done a lot of that in my life, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay. That, regular, that regular sort of J-O-B. And so anyway, I went off to this interview because it seemed like the adult and responsible thing to do. And it was a manager position. And part of the interview was a presentation. I had to develop a presentation. They gave me a scenario and I'm sure many of you right, who are right. watching have, have done this. Yeah. Yes. And so I created this presentation and it was quite, it was short. It was only 10 or <clears throat> excuse me, 15 minutes, but, and then I had to present to the, to the interviewers, to the panel. And the pre it went really great. It was really good. And that they were seemed really engaged and I was really pleased with my performance and all of those great things. And I never got hired. <laughs> so anyway, that was kind of the end of that. I thought, well, I tried and I thought it was really good, but huh, oh, well, well, not too much longer after that, the phone rang and one of the women who was in that interview panel, said, hey, Jen, my name is Shona Welsh, and I have created a proposal. I'd like to go to the Middle East and do this public speaking program. And I was so impressed with your presentation. I wonder if you might be interested in being a part of this, of this proposal. And I said, sounds Wow, great. wow. So then, you know, we didn't know if we would get, to get this proposal to go through or not but in the end obviously it did and this this woman and I Shona became we went wow we this is great this is fun we work well together we had a great time in the Middle East it was extraordinary and we decided we should form a company and that was the birth of Ovation Experts and Speaker Training. Wow that's that yeah very cool it, it's very interesting to see people's journey and how one one leads to another one thing yes. leads to another how a failed interview turns into a business i know yeah right? it's true but again if you can just if you can just see an opportunity it's no different than you neil right. you, you you go from from your job and now you're hosting a podcast you're <laughs> you're doing videos for for tiktok you're i mean come on hey. how do how do you go from being a a money guy right who's and there's a total stereotype right is the whole accountant kind of thing. I know you're not an accountant, but, and you made a huge shift because an opportunity presented itself and you chose to see it. Right. Well, I'm still a money guy. Um, I know you are, but you're, <laughs> you're expanding. Yes, Come on, absolutely. Talk about expansion. Holy absolutely. Geez. Absolutely. You actually brought back a memory of a job interview that I went to many years ago when I was with the government. And I was just thinking, I'm so grateful that I didn't get that job as Isn't well. Yeah. I had to do a presentation. It was yeah. a director position and I had to do this presentation and I did the presentation and I'm sure 
I'm sure they loved it or whatever, or, but it, it didn't materialize for what, whatever reason. And now I'm thinking to myself, if I had gotten that job, how different my journey would have been. I probably would have stayed there and, and made good money, but I would have stayed there and would not have exposed myself to, to all of the things that I've been able to to have in my life since. Yeah, and how great is it to be able to look back at your life and recognize those moments, right? And yeah. we, all, we all have them. So, yeah. and, and look at them and go, cool. Yeah. I was either looking out for myself or someone was looking out for me. How, yeah. However you, you think about those yeah. kinds of things, it's a, it's yeah. a great exercise every now and again absolutely. to kind of take a look I, at the path you travel. Absolutely. So many, if, when I look back, I look at the greatest hardships that I've ever had and realized that they have either developed some of the greatest strengths that I have <laughs> or created some of the best opportunities that have ever come my way have come out of that. It's right? true. So it's it, true. It's amazing. Okay. Well, we, we've gotten into learning about the nutshell that is Jan Bailey and Ovation, and we need to get into learning about how we can apply these things to our life, whether it be job, whether it be business, whatever, whether it be TikTok, I'm doing an ad for them now. <laughs> so we're going to go over to the wealth building portion. And for those of you guys listening, you can come join us over there and we're going to go do that. And we're back. This is the Leadership to Wealth podcast. And I'm your host, Neil D'Souza. And we have a great, great guest today. Her name is Jan Bailey. Her company is Ovation. And they are teaching us today. Jan is going to teach us today how to, actually, I'm not even entirely sure, but you're going to teach us about public speaking and how it can make an impact in our life, our jobs, our business, how it can touch into all these different areas. And now, I don't know what you're about to, what you're about to share with us, but let's go down. Where do you start when it comes to public speaking? Because how many people are terrified of that yeah. topic of public speaking? Uh, yeah, well, you know, Neil, thanks for the introduction and, the, and bringing up all of people's fears. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Well, this no, is the wealth is building portion, right? So I know, it's we true. have to talk about it. How are we going to make that money? It's true. You've got to Anytime you want to think about wealth, whether it's wealth in your personal life or wealth in your financial life, spiritual life, whatever you've Absolutely. got going on, you probably, odds are good, you've got to blow through some barriers, yes. right? You have to expand yourself, whether yes. that's your, your ideas or your attitudes or your opportunities, because you need to, to touch more people, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the essence of speaking. And what we have found is that if you can, if any person can, face their discomfort with speaking in front of a group. And I don't mean an audience of a thousand. I mean, maybe it's a group of three people in a board meeting. If you can look at your fears about that and you can walk through them and prove to yourself that you can do it and you can do it with some skill, you might need a little help, but that's okay. If you can do that, imagine what else you can do because people build this huge story in their head about how nervous uncomfortable awkward whatever word you want to choose they are about speaking in front of people and they've got a big story in their head which might not actually be true mm -hmm. so if you can step through that and into you find who you are in front of an audience then it opens this world of possibilities that you think to yourself it shifts a belief and you think, I did that. I did that thing that I have been scared of for so long. Now what? Now what can I do? Mm -hmm. And it is, Neil, extraordinary to watch people come into that feeling about themselves where they just think, whoa, I did that. I enjoyed that. Bring it. What's next? It's yeah. very cool to watch. Yeah. So speaking but is a is a very powerful catalyst. So now that most of our audience is terrified, uh, <laughs> because you know that that haze just went over, I'm gonna have oh. to I'm gonna have to speak publicly. No, I 
I can't. Okay, but yeah. let's, well, well let's, take, let's take a step back. Yeah. Remember, all speaking is public speaking. Okay. Whether okay. you're speaking right. to one, whether you're speaking to one back. person, all speaking or is public five speaking. or 10 or 500, doesn't matter. Okay. All speaking is public speaking. So most of us are doing it now. How about we just strive to do it a little bit better? Okay. How about we strive to be a little bit clearer, a okay. little bit more organized in our thoughts so that, and we've all had this experience. We open our mouths and our brains fall out, right? You just think, and then you walk away and you think, oh, why did I say that? Oh my gosh, right? And you and I both know lots of business, most business doesn't really happen in the boardroom. It happens in the hallway. It happens in the elevator on the way down. Well, right, right now, not so much, but you know what I'm right. saying. Right. In the elevator on the way down to the main floor, or when your boss happens to say, Hey, Neil, what about that thing? And tell me a little bit about that project. And you've got a very short amount of time to be able to go organize, 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 open your mouth, right. and out comes something. Wow. And I think we really, so I think as, as business people and as entrepreneurs and as budding entrepreneurs or budding leaders, yeah. we really need to work perhaps a little bit harder at at seeking out those ways that we can connect with people right? and those ways that we can get our message out and the ways that we can yes. start a conversation, which is obviously oh what you're goodness. doing, right? You oh said, Hey, goodness. a conversation needs to be had about yes. all of these things. And so you decided, well, it's a different world. It's a different platform yeah. stepping in. Right. And so right. you're starting a conversation, which is, which is wonderful. Now it's a bit tricky for some people because the camera intimidates people to right. a large extent so so now here i'm going to talk about speaking now i'm going to talk about speaking on camera I like double right. a double right. whammy i'm just hammering people with all their fears today but right but that's if, if you're done. listening in right now i am doing something very different i'm standing up for this interview with jan as opposed to normally sitting down and right now i'm doing the ymca mm -hmm. which you can't see but and you look good there you go <laughs> Yeah. Uh, because clearly I'm not worried about about uh, how I look on camera. No, but see, I would just I'm going to just I'm going to flat out disagree with you. Okay. Because it seems like that would make for good TV. Uh, no, because when we stand, yes. when we present, what yes. happens? Automatically, we open up a little bit. We stand up straighter. There's more space for breath. Absolutely. When we are able to take a big breath. And I know this sounds too simple, but when we're able to take a big breath, it signals to our brain, oh, everything is good. Because when you're nervous or when you're, your adrenaline is flowing and you're thinking, oh my God, I've got to get out of here. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm uncomfortable. The breath comes shorter because the blood is going elsewhere and your body's ramping up to run. But if you take a nice big calm breath, it fools your body and your brain into thinking, I'm good. I am calm. I am cool and I am collected. Mm -hmm. And so automatically you become a better presenter because your brain is engaged, right? You're not, you're not diverting your thinking power elsewhere and you're automatically able to be more energetic, right? right. You already have gestured from the first time you and I talk, you're a totally different guy. You're, you're using your hands, you're gesturing, you smile more because you're open and standing. So I highly recommend Anytime you're doing a Zoom or a presentation or you're talking to the board, whatever it is that you're doing, and you're online, stand up, stand right. up. It energizes your performance immediately. So go for it. Absolutely. I, I agree with that 100%. I've actually found that when sitting in a seat, I know, I know a lot of people, if you're listening, if you're watching, a lot of people like the security of being in a chair. And, yes. and feeling that comfort, maybe having the table in front of them. Yeah. But what I found for me is that when standing up, I, I feel freer. I feel I've got a certain amount of space around me. The flight or, uh, or fight response completely changes. Yeah. I'm not boxed in. Now, if I have to run away from you and go somewhere else, I can go ahead and do that. You're, you're, you're set up for right? that. <laughs> and it's very interesting to see how that changes our mood as you're talking about our dynamic and what yeah. you're able to, what yeah. you're able to produce. It, it really does. And I think, 
I think that you hit the nail on the head there is that it's about safety and security, right? Mm. If I can grab hold of the lectern, if I can hold on to my and play with my pen as I yeah. anything that sort of gives us that feeling of being anchored. Yeah. So one of our jobs as we work with with people who are wanting to expand their abilities as speakers and want to take yourself to the next level is helping them to figure out who they are mm -hmm. without that security blanket. And I know that sounds really strange, but what do you mean I have to figure out who I am? Well, most of us are so busy being the boss or the husband or the father, or we have a role, right? We have a role. Mm -hmm. And in right. that role, we're, we're kind of different people. And sometimes we're not necessarily who we are because we have it in our head. Well, I'm an engineer, therefore I have to present in a certain way. I have to, to speak in a certain way. And, and that's hard because you have to filter yourself and who you would naturally be through this engineer filter. And I'm just using that as an example, yeah. obviously, but yeah. so when you stand up and you allow yourself to be you, you might be surprised what happens. You might be surprised at, at the fun that you're able to have when you kind of shed that notion of what you're supposed to be. Right. And you become right. yourself. I think I will add to that and just say yes. that I think that this has caused I, a lot of my, my friends and people that I, that I know, and perhaps yours as well, Neil, that people have been reflecting mm -hmm. and saying, is this what I want to do? Is this who I want to be? Is this the kind of work that I want to go back to? Once things sort of shift or open up or change or whatever is going to happen in the future, is this the way, is this the path that I want to be on? And that's mm -hmm. the choice that people are making. And so if while you're making those decisions and while you're reflecting on those things, imagine if you could do a TikTok video and figure out who you are. Yeah. Imagine if you could be on a podcast and sort of test drive a new, yes. a new vocation or a new personality or a new, a new personality. That sounded funny, but a new mm, aspect absolutely. maybe yeah. of your personality. Right. And you right. could, you could allow some of, of that to come out and express yourself in a different way. Right. How much easier would that make it for you to decide what it was that you wanted to be when you grew up? Right. Cause we're right. all in the process of growing up <laughs> and how fun would that be? And that's what speaking is about. Right. And when we do our workshops, we do all kinds of improvisational speaking of, on crazy topics and we laugh and we have so much fun that people sort of forget that they're becoming better speakers. Right. But part of that is to, to help people to allow or to trust what's going to come out of their mouth, mm -hmm. to trust that ideas will come, to trust that they're creative, to trust that they have passion that they want to come out. And if you can start to do those kinds of things, mm -hmm. you start to connect with who you are and who you really want to be and decide if you fit in your profession. Right. Okay. So I've got to ask the question because I, I get this asked of me so often. Okay. People want to go out. They want to express themselves on social media because that's the medium of the day, yeah, sure. right? Yeah. That's the medium. Yeah. People want to be able to express themselves and like, how do I, how do I start? How do I, where they're scared, what they're going to do. They're scared of how they're going to look. They're scared of what people are going to think of them. Where, where does someone start to be able to address this before you can even get into how many ums, likes, <laughs> ahs, how do I just start okay. speaking publicly? Okay, well, here it comes. Ovation experts and speaker training. Yeah. The answer the is found, the, the golden found. rule. Here we go. Well, you know, unfortunately, what I was going to say is, gee, Neil, you'd probably be able to answer that question better than me because you did it. You <laughs> did it. And, I, and, and so I'm the person that once you've decided that you're going to do it, I can give you all kinds of help. Right. And I can give you all kinds of help at figuring out how you want to be and how you want to look and how you want to sound on camera, because that's certainly my skill set. Right. But I think what happens is, you know, sometimes it's the coming together of a, it's a perfect storm, right? And it's sort of this coming together of, of frustration with what I'm doing and, and need to be, to be doing something more or something different or something challenging or something exciting. And mm -hmm. the notion of growth mindset and I can't remember what the opposite one is, is, is 
is really true. And if you're at a place where you just want different or more, or you just kind of feel that, you know, there's an angst, right? There's that sort yeah. of a, a feeling of, oh, what's wrong with me? I just feel sort of Ugh, all the time. Well, that's your fabulous body. It's your fabulous brain. It's their way of saying, let's do something different. Mm. And I think that the, it's just about stepping out and giving it a try. And mm. all that judgment that you think is going to happen, yeah, it's mostly Ooh. up there. It's you. You're the one that judges you far more harshly than everyone else does. It's your voice in your head that's saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, you can. Go for it. Give it a try. What have you got to lose? Move to Vancouver, right? You've right. got nothing to lose. Give it a go. So you tell us, how did you end up on? Well, on well try, try this on for size. <laughs> when it comes to statistics, there are more people, statistically, people are more afraid of um, give, as public speaking than they are of death. So more you're people gonna, would I rather know. be in, in the, the coffin. <laughs> oh, you're killing me here, Neil. You're you're making me look like I should have worn. I'm wearing blue. It looks black. I, I feel like I'm not, I'm like the Undertaker or the mortician or whatever. So you know what? Most people, and you all know this to be true. Right. We build stuff up in our head to be so big we and i don't care whether it's i have got to paint the master bedroom or i've got to make dinner for my family on saturday or i've got to deliver a talk to the board right we are our worst enemy and we build those things up in our head to be so big that right. that bedroom never gets painted because right. by the time you realize you're going to you got to clean out the closet. You got to buy the supplies. You got to move all the furniture. You've got to, right? And all of a sudden, it just gets so overwhelming that we don't even bother to do stuff. So, at some point, you have to decide is that the kind of person that I want to be? Or do I want to be the kind of person who steps in, who steps in and lives their life? who steps in and grows, who steps in and expands. And that is the kind of person that recognizes that if they can become a better communicator, their whole life can change. Right. If you can learn how to influence people, how to persuade people, how to connect with people, if you, your marriage will improve, your relationship with your kids will improve, your business will improve, cross the board across the board. Absolutely. So again, I'm not talking about standing on a stage in front of a thousand people. You don't have to do that. Nowhere is that written. Mm -hmm. If you decide you like that, go for it. Right. But just to improve your ability to communicate and relate and connect will change your life. Right. Hands down. Absolutely. You know, if I consider what might be at the core of it, what I come to is self-expression people many times they are held back in their in their self-expression when they know that it's there they know that that opportunity is there to express their thoughts express their views and instead they hold it in yeah. and they don't realize that it everything in life really has to to do with that Imagine going through your whole life and not being able to express yourself, how lonely a place that would be. And it's part of our journey here at Leadership to Wealth is that realizing that each one of us has a voice, right? That that's, I had so many people coming and talking about how closed in they felt with all of the media that's, that has been going on that, I thought somebody has to speak out and I'm really trying to encourage other people that, Hey, take that step for yourself and watch those ramifications, watch all those things that can come to fruition. And I think this conversation is a powerful one 
far beyond any amount of money that you can ever make to be self-expressed, to be heard, to be able to convey your message. It's yeah, such a well powerful said. thing. Yeah. Well said, because really you're right. That is, that is the crux of it. And I think that at the risk of sounding too philosophical or like a pop right. psychologist or whatever, right. I, I, think that, I think that we're so busy being what people think we should be or we're so busy being what we think our, our parents thought we should be or our spouse thinks we should be or our, I don't know, Pick, pick anyone in your life, really, that we get so caught up in that, that we forget, like you said, that we've got our own voice. And, yeah. and wow. how would it feel if I learned how to express that and feel good about expressing that? Right. And, and, and I don't mean you you need to sort of throw out your life as it has been thus far and go, Oh, my right. gosh, I'm, I'm so inauthentic. That's not what we're, that's not what we're saying at all. Right. It's about it's about dabbling a little bit and, and figuring out what really feels like it fits for you right. because it takes a ridiculous amount of energy to be something that you don't feel is quite yourself. And right. it's so draining. So if you could just let go of some of those, yeah. I don't know, things that you're hanging on to that, that you're hearing in your voice that you should be, right and learn to express yourself it, it's very freeing and and that's what speaking can do for you that's right. what allowing yourself to participate in that can do for you so what are some of the things that people can do to really be improving their ability to speak so that they can express themselves sure well i think like you said part of part of the problem is is that especially now as we as we're doing this on zoom people are very unfortunately looking at themselves on camera right. so they're getting a double whammy right. right they're getting a they're getting the feeling of oh my goodness i'm a little bit uncomfortable speaking in front of people to begin right. with or or embarking on video technology or whatever it is that they're doing right. and now you want me to sit here and look at myself on camera really really this is what you want me to do so it it <laughs> It can be a bit of a challenge, but relax. The camera can be your friend. Okay. So the first thing. Step really number one, the camera can be your friend. Totally can be. Yes. Totally can be. So let's, let's talk about a couple of concrete things about, about feeling like you're doing a good presentation as far okay. as the camera goes. Got as it. far as the camera goes, think about, think about the aesthetic of where you are at the background. Mm. I very fortunately have this lovely have this lovely fireplace in the background and then an office and it's quite beautiful. But I thought about that. I walked around and I picked a location because that's the, the way I wanted to present myself. Right. I could have chosen a different background. And there's a nice plant in the background too. I brought that plant in. I've oh. got dirt under my nails, Neil. And I, <laughs> thankfully no one can see that, but I did. I dragged it in from an office next door. I totally did because I thought, Oh, I need a little something here. Right. So think about that because that's, just like how you choose your clothes before you do a presentation is mm -hmm. an expression of yourself. So is your background, right? And so you want that to be part of it. Right. Now, as far as, as framing, I think, you know, Neil and I want to be the same sort of size in the screen so that okay. we've both got, we kind of look the same in the conversation, which is great. Now I would also normally stand, but I, it, yeah. So now it looks a bit funny, right? It's like, Oh, Jan's got such big hair, right? please try and be yourself, right? Allow yourself to gesture. But if you're sitting, you need to be able to see those hands a, a little bit. So allow them to come in. That's fine. Right. Eye contact. Is everyone listening? Is everyone listening? Are you all looking at me? Eye contact is the number one thing that you need to practice. Just like when you're speaking in real life, you need to look at people on camera. So that means you need to actually look at the lens. It does not mean that you look down at Neil because now I'm not looking at the audience and they soon start to feel disconnected. So you've got to look at the camera. It's weird. I'll give you that. It feels weird. But just imagine that your friend is sitting there behind the lens or whatever you need to do to look at the camera. Right. All of my notes that I haven't used... <laughs> are up clipped there you i've got a little gator clips so i've got these lovely little clips and i've got these lovely little cards and i've got them clipped all around my laptop so they're little cheat sheets that you can put up so just little things to make you confident whatever makes you feel uh, confident. so some practical uh, okay so practical things. so step number one the camera can be your friend step yes. number two 
um, look at the camera. Yes. Step number three, you can have nice cheat. little cheat, cheat sheets uh, around it for yeah. you. Wow. Okay. And then the fourth thing I would say to you is a little bit about eyeline and light. Make sure that your lighting is good. I, I mean, I know that sounds that sounds crazy, but the the mentality of if you if you look if you look good, you feel good, right? Yeah. It it really that really is part of it. So yeah. if you look at yourself on camera and go, hey, I look pretty good, and look at my nice background, it really does make a difference to your confidence. It's no different than you would put on a business outfit to go and present in front of the the boss or or do an interview. It's no right. different. Right. So we're just talking a little bit about that. Now, the other thing as far as practicalities, if you're if you're live or if you're on camera, speak up. Right. Give yourself some volume because as soon as you crank up the volume, you crank up the energy. Absolutely. So go for it. Take a big breath and present. Give so and we tend when we're sitting at a laptop and and remember you talked earlier about the desk and the being surrounded by your stuff, you tend to shrink a little bit yes. and the volume gets a bit quieter. And as soon as the volume gets a bit quieter and you get smaller, then the energy gets diminished. And now people kind of lose interest, right? So sit up straight, give us some volume, present, right? Present. Right, right. Wow, all, all great. All, yeah, all I great. Have to, try not to overwhelm everybody, but, and then, and then be yourself. Like, you right. know, there's, it, it can be a lot, but, but just do it. And right. take a, right. a look at yourself and, and, get some help if you've got some feedback from friends someone like me right ovation we do all kinds of work right. with people online one-on-one -on -one who just want to get better and want to feel more confident because there's nothing worse than than trying to do a good job in your business and being terrified about having to present on camera that's just right. stress wow that that's an awesome opportunity if people are trying to work on their social media presence you're able to, all of your coaching sessions will be, your speaker training will be virtual anyway. So they yeah. have to get used to speaking to the camera, absolutely. you know, yeah, look absolutely. at the camera yeah. you know, and uh, <laughs> figure out all these details. That's just, just plain practicing yeah. by, by uh, contacting ovation, contacting. Yeah, totally. you. And it, you know, it's a, it's a skill. You, mm -hmm. you don't learn how to play tennis in a, Day. in a classroom yeah no no you don't you have yeah. to actually get out and you have to actually hit the ball and you have to actually launch it over the fence and you have to do all those bad things and you got to run around you really have to it's no different than learning how to speak to the camera not everybody is comfortable with it and as you practice and as you get the hang of it and as somebody like me gives you a few tr uh, tricks and tips and you go oh hey that worked right. i feel better it gets better it gets right. better well, that, that, I mean, that's, that's huge right there, because if we're afraid of what our presence is going to be like publicly, yeah. then having a coach that is able to go through and help you with those different items that are, that may be worrisome, allow you to take that off your plate, right? Yes. Allow you to take yeah. that off your plate so you can be confident and you're, this is actually the, I guess, leads right into the question. How does someone have a presence on online? How do they have a presence in social media? Because anyone, and we've all seen this, even those of us that are listening in right now, we've all seen this where someone is on social media and you're thinking, yeah, swipe. It, like it's either so boring or so magnanimous. You, that you you just want to move on it it's just not in your space yeah right and the presence is all i mean wrong. some of that and some of that is very practical don't 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 be mortified to think oh my god people are going to swipe me away sometimes yeah. you're, what you're offering is not what people want right but as audiences presenting versus having a presence right so oh, sorry uh, i mean presence presence as versus to, presenting yeah. yes as as audience member, let's, we're going to flip it on its head a little bit first. Okay. As an audience member, yes, you are all much more discriminating now. Okay. You expect to be impressed faster. 
you expect to be you expect thank thank you very much to ted talks we we expect speakers to be uh, 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 now right. right and that is not always the case so our level of our level of tolerance for people who are really not that articulate or clear on cam on camera or live is a little bit less so there are some pressures for sure and the audience can smell inauthentic presenters in a so if you don't believe what you're talking about the audience will absolutely not believe you right so you have to connect using a story using your personal experience using whatever you got you've got to connect to your message if you don't believe in your product if you don't believe in your your message or what you're trying to to sell and i say sell meaning Every, show the audience yeah, yeah, yeah not necessarily a product if you don't believe then then the audience doesn't believe and that really is the essence of it so that's why when i talk about eye contact and when i talk about gesturing and when i talking talk about smiling and creating some energy mm -hmm. well that's all about you connecting to your personal message because if you see someone who who genuinely doesn't believe in what they're talking about there's a flatness there right, right. there's a there's a uh, there but if someone is really genuinely excited about it, and I hope you're feeling that from me because I think that what I do is totally cool. So I get energized when I'm talking about it. And that is yeah. what I hope connects with, with audience members, right? And yeah. so it's no different, no matter what your product is. If you believe, they'll believe. So do whatever you can right. to authentically connect to your audience. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it's, they say the difference between the, the brain doesn't know the difference between excitement and fear. And so mm -hmm. if you can bring the, the excitement, it will convey your message. Your message yeah. will be conveyed that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and, and add to that, that the brain, the body feels excitement and fear in the same way. It's the same stimulus, right? It's right. the same physical response. So right. if you can find the before you, before you present on camera, before you, 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 whatever you're doing, you're delivering your, you're delivering a talk, you're doing a video, you're doing whatever you're doing, sit for a minute and remind yourself of why you want to do this. Sit for a moment and say to yourself, why is this important? Why do I believe that people need to know this? They need to hear this. They need mm -hmm. to feel this. They need to see this, whatever, whatever it is. Why do you genuinely believe that it's important? And if you can, if you can connect to that feeling and remind yourself of why you believe it's important, you might be surprised at what that will do to your presentation and to your, to your presence, to your presence. Right. right. Yeah. So for, for the listeners, for people that are watching this, listening, whatever your product is, whatever business, whatever job you have, mm -hmm. get in touch with what's real and authentic in it. And that will in and of itself help change the dynamic when you speak. And then along with, with all the other the practical tips, stuff. Uh, the practical, yeah, the practical uh, look, stuff. look at the camera, look like at lighting. people. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That, that's great. Um, yeah. Really, okay, and are I there... know sometimes people are probably sitting and watching and thinking, I know you all are, I can hear you. I can hear you saying it in my head. You're saying, yeah, but Jan, but I hate my job. Or yeah, Jan, but right. I'm not interested in this particular PowerPoint that I have to deliver to the board or, or whatever. But under all of the, and Neil, you can speak to this, under all of the numbers or under all of the paperwork or under all of the bureaucracy, whatever, whatever you find yourself in, mm -hmm. there's a story. There's a story about a person, mm -hmm. right? And whether you're a, a financial company who is, is, has a bunch of money that they want to give to, to homeowners, it's not about the money. It's about the people who want to buy a home. Right. And, and so if you can remember what the numbers mean or the statistics mean or the theories mean or the whatever, 
that you're presenting then and the humanity of it right. right the essence of the humanness at the at the very center of it then then that will help you connect or reconnect to why you're doing what you're doing. And I know the board wants to hear the numbers and the board wants to hear the projections and the board wants to hear the whatever that they are that they are interested in. Right. But at the, at the heart of it, at the heart of whatever your business is, there's probably a human need of some kind. Absolutely. If you can speak to that, it's extremely powerful. Yeah. But first you gotta figure out how to be clear, right. how to be concise and how to be confident, right? That's right. the, there's the fundamental speaking ability. Right. So that's why I say when you can figure out how to do this and when you can take the, what you might think is a risk and begin to speak more regularly and speak up, and find your voice, it can change your life. Mm -hmm. It can change your life. Well, for, for the people that are wading into this water, what I would suggest to them is, I, I love TikTok as a platform for people to practice because it's a very forgiving place. It's a very yeah. forgiving platform. Uh, I'm not sure how you feel about all the social implications and where it comes from and Donald Trump and all the rest, but it's a, we'll see. Yeah. It's a great place for people to practice because yeah, it's very forgiving. And then you can continue to work on your message in the other areas. On, on the other platforms that you want to speak into, right? Speak onto. And I, I think it's a, it's a great way for me. I found, Hey, I, I can make tons of mistakes over there and then I can refine my message in other places. One of the things that is interesting to me and as we taper off here is it's interesting how you can produce content and one piece of content can resonate with people um in a way that you can't imagine and then yes. another piece that you can be enamored with and it does absolutely nothing i i, I wish you got any i secret? really wish that in this moment i had something profoundly intelligent and insightful to say i really do neil yeah i really do i got nothing right I got nothing. I, I find that fascinating as well. I find that fascinating as well. And is it just, is it the timing? Is it what people are, are looking for in the moment? Is it the yes. way you did your hair that day? Yes. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Cause you're right. It is unbelievable how that happens. Right. Yeah. Well, for me, what shows up is that if, if you can just be content with hitting singles and doubles, Every now and then you still get around you, the bases. You, you'll get a every now and then you'll get a triple. Every now and then you'll hit a home run. Yeah. But if you if you're consistently putting material out there, putting yourself out there, that, that's what it really comes down to. Putting yourself out there, hitting singles and doubles, then then you will eventually hit some triples and home runs. And I think this is where you, Jan, ovation. Um, experts in speaker training where you get to come in and help people craft so that they are able to go from first to second or maybe yeah. second to third more more often on a regular basis because you're able to convey your message more clearly yeah and with some and with confidence and I like the baseball analogy I think it's yeah. a very because it's incremental right it really yeah. is but it doesn't matter the runs still count yeah. Whether you did it one base at a time or whether you did it as a home run, the runs still count. Yeah. And, and you're right. And as soon as you can, if you can just find the confidence to do it once and then yeah. the next time is easier and then yeah. the next time, right? So yeah. Yeah, it's about just yeah. stepping in and doing it. Well, anyone that knows, uh, knows my investing philosophy, it's consistent money. And um, the, a great, a great quote that I heard is, uh, we underestimate the compounding effect of consistency. So oh, that's very good. So wow. here's the, so here's the uh, last thing. What's next? What's next for you? What are you doing right now? Are you available to take on new clients? Uh, what, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are certainly available and we are certainly available online and, and 
and though I do love to be live and I love yeah. that sort of exchange that happens, it's right. still a really great medium. This still really works. And some people are much more com comfortable learning yeah. to work with someone like me and ovation speaking in their living room, right? Because right. it feels safe, it feels comfortable. And so that right. just makes it easier to step into this kind of thing. So yes, absolutely. And right. ovation speaker training is our website.com. And we are i'm writing a book right now just wrapping up a book that's about all of the things that that you and i have talked about it's more about the it's more about the notion of what if right what if you did this one thing that terrified wow. you so it's not really a how-to book on how to speak there's lots of those out there and there are some really great ones yeah. but it's about it's about that emotional step that it takes and about all yeah. the fear and the judgment and when, when's that coming out i'm hoping that it will come out for christmas i'll keep you posted okay that's great. Yeah. And, and so, do we have so a title that we can expect or hope for? I'm sorry, is it? Do we have a title that we can a title? expect? Uh, it's going to be called, I believe, What If. What? Oh, great. Sense. Love yeah, it. Yeah, that makes sense. What If and Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Ooh. So, because it. It, it really is true. I've seen some amazing, and I know we haven't really had occasion to talk about it, but I've seen some people transform. I, I've mm -hmm. got no other word for it. Transform through moving through that fear of speaking. So... So if I could say one thing to your, to the people who are listening yes. and the people who are watching is, is just, you must do the thing for another quote, you must do the thing that you fear the most. Right? right. And I know I'm coming up against this reputation of public speaking. I get it. I get it. But I have seen people who are terrified. I have seen them walk through that and be extraordinary people on the back end of that. So I know all of you watching and all of you listening can be more. Mm. And if that's what you want, whether it's more health, more wealth, more family, more confidence, this can help you do it. So step out, go for it. Wow. Wow. Well, if you want to 10x your business, you want to learn to be able to convey your message. You want to be able to express yourself. You want to be able to get better in all things social media. Mm -hmm. Ovation, experts in speaker training. Contact Jan Bailey. Jan, it has been so great having it's you today. Really great. Thank you so much. Again, if they want to get a hold of you, they can go to? Uh, well, you can email me directly if you'd like. Jan at OvationSpeakerTraining.com or check out our website, OvationSpeakerTraining.com. Love it. Love it. Jen, thank you. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the it show has. today. It's been so great to be here. And thank you for being such a shining example of what people can do when they see an opportunity. Thank you for that. Okay. How many, how many ums? Ah. On that list? <laughs> Look, a blank sheet. So great, I, Neil. <laughs> I started off the interview with an um. So we'll end it with an um. Guys, it's been good having you. We'll see you next time.